Dennis, thanks for sitting down with me today. I appreciate it. I'd love to have the opportunity. Dennis, your student's stepping down as a CEO of Illinois Crop Improvements, and you've had, obviously, a very distinguished career with, uh, with agriculture in Illinois. This is a big question, but what aspects of Illinois Crop are you most proud of accomplishing? Well, I think, really, it falls in, in two to three categories. Uh, one would be the opportunity to create a lot of collaborative activities. Um, as the seed industry has changed over the years, its original heritage was seed certification period and we had the opportunity with the advent of biotechnology to reach out and collaborate with other service providers that hopefully offered a, an enriched service package to support the industry at times way beyond what we could do by ourselves. Probably the second area would be the fact that uh, just coming within the background and the opportunity to participate in a number of collaborative research activities of having the, the research side and um, the academic network and background to be able to collaborate with others and participate in uh, competitive research primarily in the grains and the utilization activities and just my personal preferences and backgrounds has always been a lot in evaluations and assessments so we're kind of able to mix some personal interests and background and loves uh, to the time and the tunes as the industry's been involving you know, going into uncharted territory Illinois Crop offers accreditation and certification services domestically and internationally, which is a big swath to mm -hmm. big swath to fill. How does the association manage phytosanitary and seed certification mm -hmm. issues, both domestically and internationally? Well, the seed certification um, activities of Illinois Crop goes way, 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 way back. But with the advent of DeKalb as a company and being a parent company when corn became a hybridized crop and started becoming of prominence globally, that gave Illinois Crop some background and heritage of working at the parent seed level. As a result of that experience in the certification track, ultimately then that led to the international certification under the OECD program in addition to the AOSCA, which would be pr primarily U.S. and Canada, but it is of an international scope and area. So over the years, Illinois Crop has worked in that role of being involved facilitating companies as they are producing parent seed, moving it globally, and then as we've seen um, South American or Southern Hemisphere production and research locations all across the globe in the warmer climates, seed moves very quickly, um, very unique paths, and with the history, Illinois Crop has been able to really have a pretty good handle on how parent corn seed moves and that's kind of been a, a developed specialty. Illinois Crop then uh, in the mid to late 80s established work in, in doing work in Puerto Rico and so we've always considered that as Southern Illinois and so the work has been performed in uh, Puerto Rico has been done under the certification guidance guidelines and to the same standards as what we do in Illinois. Over the years we've had the opportunity to be assigned to administer AOSCA and OECD work in uh, Hawaii. We oversaw that for two years, several years ago, and likewise on some special projects in both um, um, in some of the Caribbean islands, I forgot which one that we did now, and also we did with the Costa Rican National Authority for a couple years. So we've expanded and we've done that to the USDA, OECD, and our Illinois standards on certification. Very similar path on phytosanitary. Um, Illinois Crop had been involved with the University of Illinois, USDA, and State of Illinois doing phytosanitary for many, many years before National Seed Health Initiative began. And we learned that we could have been grandfathered into that system to do work in the U.S., well, globally, actually, mm -hmm. that we could have been grandfathered, but we chose to go through the National Seed Health and to be recognized on merit. And likewise, we do that in Puerto Rico as we do in Illinois under one accreditation system. So our goal is to make it seamless, whether it be certification or phytosanitary, that we do our best to comply with all the uh, certification, um, accreditation rules, regulation, compliance audits, so that it's, it's done under one system even though the services are at multiple locations. I guess that's one of those scenarios, you either believe in accreditation or you don't. And you believe in accreditation. I think that accreditation has served very, very well. It obviously has to be set up and administered properly. Uh, it can't be just a, an uncontrolled license to do something. It's got to have some teeth in it. 
And yet, on the other hand, it's got to be responsive to the seed companies and the businesses because they work in a global environment and each and every activity they do is a little bit unique than maybe the last one they did. And quite often, they're under constraints of either a national government requirement, it may be a phytosanitary rule for very good reasons, it may be uh, some might consider um, more of a, a trade issue, um, some may just simply be confusion because the U.S., the international seed movement, is very different and interpreted differently around the globe and crop by crop. And so we have to have a degree of flexibility to apply the systems properly, but there does need to be some discretion used in, in making we, sure that we meet the intent of the certification or the accreditation, not just checking a box to say, done that, been there, it's, a, it's authentic and it's recognized. Illinois Crop Improvement has uh, the Seed Lab and the Identity Preserve Grain Lab. Can you share with us? Can you share with us why both of those are so important? Certainly. Uh, traditionally, we would look at the seed laboratory working with the varietal purity of seed and also then the viability, the germinability of seed, and that has been the backbone of the seed industry, regardless of crop. And with that program. Uh, we, we work to all of the standards that are recognized and approved by USDA and likewise in the collaboration that's recognized in the OECD scheme. I believe currently in our laboratory we work with over 500 different crop kinds, which is surprising that you think about Illinois being corn, soybean, and a little bit of wheat from here to there. Yeah. But we work with a wide variety of, of crops in those laboratories. Sometimes we're looking for optimum germination and performance. Others we want to add stressors so that the clients can see how that seed might perform under various stressors. And those are the traditional seed laboratory uh, activities. We shift into the Identity Preserve Grain. It's really a bioprocessing lab. Um, it was established um, in the late 1980s looking at the pot, uh, potential of identity preservation activities. And with that we do primarily food grade corn and food grade soy. We do get involved in some other activities. The University of Illinois Department of Ag Engineering was instrumental in helping us establish that and the laboratory was actually launched originally in an incubator building on campus. When Illinois Crop obtained their current building in the early 1990s, they were able to incorporate that into the new facility and have, have space. That laboratory has been involved because about half of the work works with seed breeders and seed developers. The other half of the work is in the grain industry and the utilization industry. So we serve a variety of contractual work that XYZ, here's a contract, does it meet the spec, yes or no? We, we don't care, we need to know the spec, we need to follow the methodology, and give an opinion, the contractual stuff would be between our, our clients. But we also get to be involved in a great deal of evaluation and collaborative and including national and international product projects. And for example, we are in year two of a three year consulting project with the U.S. Grains Council doing an assessment of the quality of the U.S. corn crop. Obviously, impact for international. We're a named subcontractor. We're a small group. so we. We aren't real good in doing lots of contracts and documents, but we can plug in and be a player and a contractor to do the technical work. And we do that on the food grade corns and then we get food grade soy. Um, we do the soybeans, the soy milk, uh, the flakes, the you name it. So those types of things we work with a lot of analytical work and we've even colla uh, collaborated in funded research, uh, developing some intellectual property, some new instrumentation that is promising that may offer in the soybean industry alternatives to NIR technology to do a better job of looking at some of compositional work. Don't know, it's been proof of concept, but we're, we're, we're working toward things like that in collaboration with university and private sources. You mentioned the uh, winter farm down in, I guess we can't call it a winter farm when it's in Puerto Rico, but <laughs> <laughs> the farm down in Puerto Rico can you tell us a little bit about yes. that? That's a very unique scenario. I believe you described mm -hmm. it as uh, Southern mm -hmm. Illinois. Mm -hmm. how, how does that work and how does that play into yeah. your game plan on a go forward? With Illinois crop, the, the farm in Puerto Rico has been very important. It was established in the mid 1980s. Initially, it was started just to provide uh, quick time grow outs on corn to help comply with the OECD certification system on corn. 
and then that gradually moved that the clients would say, well, if you can do a certification grow out, could you do a few grow outs for our company to see how it performs? And then it moved to, well, gosh, if corn grows there, think you could do a soybean, and then said, well, could you do a nursery? And cotton's not too different than soybean. How about sunflowers? And over the years, so it has moved from a seasonal, just doing some grow outs, that it is a year round program at this point. And we provide observations and data for grow outs, um, uh, plant breeding programs, uh, increases, generation advance, all small scale. It's all designed to be fairly small scale. If someone wants to do large scale, they need to go where it's more economical. But Puerto Rico is halfway between the U.S. Midwest and Argentina, the, su uh, the southern hemisphere. So Puerto Rico serves the counter season needs for both hemispheres and nicely because it's on a six month off cycle. And currently we provide and support uh, field corn, popcorn, broom corn, sorghum, soybeans, dry beans, cotton, peanuts, sunflowers, and stuff. Wow. But corn, soybeans are primary crops, obviously. In more recent years, we've moved uh, since like 19, or 2007 and 8, we began offering certain trait integration programs. And the very first activity we did was in a publicly recognized of being the only location that could integress uh, Roundup Ready to uh, Dicamba mm -hmm. into soybean lines for Monsanto licensees. Mm -hmm. And we work with a number of companies, but that's one that it's a public, that if uh, Monsanto, if their licensees meet their requirements, under certain requirements, if Illinois crop provides the right kind of stewardship, we're allowed to provide that support and work, um, obviously under the guidance and approval of Monsanto. And that brought in a new area that we've added soybean crossing and a lot of trade integration work. And the Puerto Rico location, that work is governed under U.S. intellectual property rights protection and the U.S. regulatory system. So people working in the seed industry globally know that the work would be done responsibly and within the courts and the um, regulatory system of the U.S. to add the integrity. So that and then the location that it, it supports both southern and northern hemisphere puts us in a very unique location. As we look ahead to 2013, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges for the seed industry? From our perspective, we're, as a third, third party service provider, we're on a need to know basis. And we generally don't need to know what the client, why they're wanting to do work with us. But as we observe the industry as a whole and discussions with clients, to us it is very, very confusing as we see all of the various technologies that are uh, currently in the market, other technologies that are being developed, and we see major technology owners and developers in varying arrangements of collaboration, cooperation, competitiveness, and lawsuits. So from the outside looking in, we're not sure how they would understand and know when they are friends and when they might be considered foes within that industry. To us that offers a lot of challenges. As a third party provider with the relationship we have with our clients, we know that's created issues for our clients. Um, ultimately it gets solved and we don't, we're not involved in that part. But that would have to be very, very confusing for the seed companies that are involved with that. Probably the other part is continuing as we look at whether you call it acquisitions, consolidations, no, we still see new companies being evolved. We, we, need, we see companies that are either acquired or in some legal fashion they become affiliated with someone either from a business perspective or a technology perspective. So those interactions, it allows people to have new partners but sometimes it, it disallows them to maintain partnership relations they've had with others that have helped make them successful. So I would think those two things alone are going to add continued challenges in the seed industry for a long, long time to come. Thanks for sitting down with me today. I appreciate your time.